This is the RX 7600, and these are the top five games people are currently playing on Steam. So the question is, how does this card perform? The reason I think this is a particularly interesting question is that by our data, the 7600 is AMD's best value current generation GPU by a reasonably decent amount at around $270. But it's a bit difficult to translate data and numbers into an actual gaming experience. So with the help of ASRock sponsoring this video, we get to check out their 7600 Steel Legend GPU, which is a beautiful looking card and have some fun playing some of the most popular games in the world to see what kind of first-hand experience you could have with this card at 1080p and 1440p. Ranked number five is Baldur's Gate 3, which is an extremely popular new game, even though it was recently shoved down from fourth place. This is one of the more demanding games on the list, even though the minimum and recommended specs are quite reasonable compared to other recent games. But after about an hour of, uh, no, no. Why does it have teeth? We're doing things. What are you? Brain or legs? Is anyone alive? Sphincter. Well, I guess I'm choosing to go in there. We are just outside of the first ship bit. This 27 FPS on the 0.1% lows is not really that noticeable. If it was in a first person shooter, 27, you'd notice that. The GPU temperature is at 62 degrees and the hotspot in the mid 70s, which is actually pretty excellent. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, and that took our 1% lows all the way down. So what happens when we change this over to 1440p? How is this going to behave? Think it might be a bit of a struggle for this card. Let's have a look, except. Okay, so we have dropped down to the 70s. We'll reset the data there. It is a lot more jumpy. You can see the frame time spikes there. 1440p high for this card, I'd say is probably a bit too much. Okay, so we have gone up to the 90s. Let's reset the data there. And that is much smoother. So we're looking at 1080p high is playable and 1440p you're looking at more like medium for Baldur's Gate. It's looking like a pretty good result for Baldur's Gate. But the game that took Baldur's Gate 3 down to fifth place is Apex Legends. Since its release, it has continued to rank extremely high in popularity, especially being a free game with quite reasonable hardware requirements. So what I did is play a couple trios games at 1080p and 1440p using the default settings for me, which favored higher visual quality and comes down to our first little bit of weirdness. The memory graph here looks fine at 1080p, but when we look over the 1440p gameplay, check out the memory usage here. Given that this is an eight gigabyte card, over eight gigabytes shouldn't really be a thing. So let's check to see what sensors we have on this card. Ah, okay. We only have memory dedicated and memory allocated in FPS monitors sensors, which is different to memory usage. And given that a modern Ryzen platform like this will automatically set resizable bar without any user input, I suspect they have something to do with the over-enthusiastic memory graph. But as we covered in this video, that's only really an issue if gameplay is affected, which will likely show itself as big frame time delays. But by the end of our games at 1080p, we managed to get an average of 143 FPS with 1% and 0.1% lows looking really great but I was surprised to see that this really didn't change much at 1440p by the averages at the end of the round. Though during the more open fight scenes, we can see that there definitely was a difference in 1440p when a lot was happening. And we are also talking about a different map. And next up is the third most popular game, which is Wallpaper Engine. Yep. Even though I have been using it for years, that really does feel like a bit of a cop out, doesn't it? And feels rude to not have a game at number three and let you guys down like that. So I'm swapping in one of the games that I've been playing the most, Halo Infinite. And I could lie to you and tell you that I wanted to use the Spanker to test out how the explosions would affect 1% lows. Do I risk it? Do I risk it? Do I risk it? Let's do it. But realistically, I just turned into a big kid and a massive weirdo, as I was just having a lot of fun messing around. Spank your face, hole into oblivion. And by halfway through the game at 1080p, we were sitting at about 95 FPS average, which is when we changed the resolution to pretty much 1440p. This did lower the averages as expected, but the 1% and 0.1% lows remained very similar compared to our 1080p results. When I'm the top player 
and I'm only half playing. I guess that makes sense. Which brings us on to the second most popular game on Steam, which is Dota 2. Being a lighter title, I'm not expecting any issues at all at 1080p high settings. And after half a game of cower away in shame, there's too many of them. Come on, where's my duties? And another half of, oh, now you're running away and cowering. Ah, I'm being hit by fire, fire. It's time to take a look at some of the performance. Okay, so at 1080p, we've played a decent amount at this point. We're running at about 220 FPS average. And look at that frame time graph. That is beautifully consistent right there, which is indicative of the 106 and 113 on the 1% and 0.1% lows. But GPU utilization could be higher here and would result in more performance. But from what I understand, lower than expected utilization seems to be quite common in Dota 2. But I'm also using local software recording for this game's screen cap as Dota 2 was the only game that didn't like my external capture device. But how does the performance change when we go to 1440p? And after trying to help my team, I killed him, but I died as well, whilst wrangling others. Phantom Assassin, where are you going? help people. But at 1440p, that changes a little bit. So 213 average, 111 on the 1% lows and 83 on the 0.1% lows. That doesn't seem like too much of a change for the average FPS, but the 0.1% lows have taken a bit of a hit, but still an incredibly consistent frame time graph. And we are utilizing more of the GPU now that we have bumped up the resolution to 1440p, which is great to see. But before we get to the last game on the list, the keen-eyed of you might have noticed something that also caught my attention. Our ASRock 7600 Steel Legend seems to be locked in at 20% fan speed and 1500 RPM in what looks like basically every single game we tested. Now that math is a little bit odd, as this would mean that the three ARGB fans can go all the way up to about 7500 RPM, which would honestly sound like an industrial hairdryer. So what I wanted to do is test thermals a bit in a Fermat torture test. This had the card's hottest recorded temperatures at 63 for the GPU and 74 for the hotspot, which is very respectable, as the 1500 RPM mark we were always running at is barely audible from this card. I even had to unplug the CPU fan just to hear it. So the Steel Legend seems to cool really well while also looking really unique. Bringing us onto the last game, ranked number one in terms of popularity on Steam, which is of course CSGO. One of the lightest titles to run and an extremely competitive esports game. Unfortunately, my FPS monitor didn't really seem to like CSGO and this screen cap is actually in 4K as I forgot to change the settings. But the fact that I was mainly paying attention to frame rate and didn't even notice that we were in 4K is a testament to how well it ran because when we use the benchmarking tool, even running on high settings, at 1080p we ended the run with 447 FPS average and over 250 at 1440p, making it an unsurprisingly great CSGO experience. But a lot of games that are in the top five most played on Steam are on the lighter side and they target a lower hardware entry point. So I thought let's have some fun and see how far we can push this card in something really demanding. I loaded up Cyberpunk, I think we can do some ray tracing stuff that will make it sweat. So let's see how it gets on. We're gonna go over to low preset and we're also gonna turn AMD FSR off as that's their upscaling technology. So we're gonna change this to off, we're gonna go apply and we're gonna run the benchmark. Um, 1080p low looks really quite good in Cyberpunk, like much better than I was expecting. So we are at 165 FPS average with a minimum of 39. What? Why? Why is FSR enabled? Does that just ignore it? Yeah, we don't need to apply any settings. Yeah, everything's off. Run benchmark. All good. What? Okay, so that time it respected FSR being off. I have no idea what happened to the first run, which gives us 106.5 FPS average at 1080p medium, no FSR upscaling. But I really wanna see what it will take to get below 60 FPS because high settings got us to 90 FPS and interestingly, ultra only dropped seven FPS compared to high, but we are still well above 60. Even ray tracing low had us at 65. So surely ray tracing medium will be too much for this poor card. 
that is correct. I mean, I'm not saying 30 is a great to experience, but there is a big difference between fluid 30 and a juddery mess. And this is somewhere in between that, giving us a result of 33.8 FPS for ray tracing medium. But because we haven't been using AMD FSR, what I'm going to do is enable that and see if it can make up some of the difference towards 60 FPS. Okay, we hit 60. Does that count? We did it for like half a second. 52.8, ray tracing medium with FSR is still a bit too much for this game. But I am rather impressed that FSR took us up that far. I didn't expect it to double, but got closer to double than not. But what I want to do is dial in settings that I would probably use. So 1080p high FSR quality, see what frame rate we get. Entering at 105 FPS, and we're probably gonna end up being more in the 100 teens, I reckon, by the end of the run. Turns out I was pretty spot on. 117 FPS, and this is with FSR enabled, and I think quality, yes, quality settings. It's probably what I would use to play this game. And I'm actually really impressed with the 7600, making the Steel Legend a great performer, while staying cool and quiet with a great design. So if this card looks like a good fit for you, I'll make sure to link it below. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated, and I hope you have an amazing day.